Good morning. Good morning. It is Thursday, April 15th, 2021. Yes, it is. I really did check this time. <laughs> Plus, it's payday for a lot of us. So I was like, it's the 15th. And I'm here on Kempenfelt Bay. And I'm uh, coming around the corner. And uh, so yesterday, good morning, Karen. Uh, yesterday, as I was finishing off my paddle, I was coming around this corner and it was full of um, merganser pears and buffalohead pears and, uh, and some seagulls. And I was like, wow, this is so cool. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, Joyce. And good morning, Louise. So as I was coming around the corner uh, and, and looking at all of these wonderful birds, I looked up in the, um, in the tree and I was like, what's that? And it was a bald eagle. So I was like, is he going to be there again today? So I was like paddling so fast. Uh, not super fast because then my elbows might give out. Good morning, Susanna and Leanne and uh, Ellen. I was like, I wonder if he's going to be there again today. So I'm kind of sneaking around the corner because if he's there... I'd love for you guys to see him, but he's not right where he was yesterday. But it was like so amazing. I actually got a video of him flying off. So uh, good morning, Paul and Sue. So glad that you've joined us this morning. And so there is no birds in this bay this morning, but you can hear them. Good morning, Tanya. I hope you can hear the birds. Right? It is just so good to be out this early in the morning. And I don't know if you can see the... No, it's too foggy for you to see the skyline behind me. But it's just such a good day. Good morning, Susanna. Suzanne. So glad that you're here. So I hope you have your coffee. I hope you're enjoying the outside. Um, it's... I walked outside and it was a little, it was spitting a little bit. I was like, what? The weather doesn't say this. So, okay, we have our coffee. I think mine's really hot. Mm. I don't want to chug it. It just feels really good to, to be here with you this morning. And, uh, yeah, this is by far one of my favorite times of the day. So I'm just going to put this down a wee bit further. And uh, there we go. So, um, <laughs> we're going to pray. Dear Lord Jesus, as we open your word this morning, would you speak to us? You are so faithful and you're so good. And so, Father, as we open your word, Spirit of the living God, would you enlighten the eyes of our hearts? Would you open our minds to where we have closed them off? And Lord, if we have any preconceived ideas, any hurts, uh, Lord, would you reveal those things that might not, uh, that might be impeding us from receiving your word and the truth and walking it out? We ask this in your name. Amen. All right. Okay. So uh, a recap. This is what I've seen so far today. Uh, I have seen seagulls, loons. I saw a heron. I saw a heron. I was so excited. I saw a heron. I saw mergansers and, uh, Canned geese and buffalo heads. That's what I've seen so far this morning. It's a good start to the day. Uh, so, I hope you have your Bible and your coffee. And so, uh, let me just dig out my Bible. Here we go. And my glasses. So the question of the day is, uh, what was the one word that we've looked at for the last two days? Because I actually have a new word today, but we're just going to do some catch-up. What was the one word that we've talked about for the last two days? We'll stick those up there. <laughs> Except for that looks really funny. One word. What was the one word that we've talked about for the last two days? Can anybody tell me what that one word was? Yeah, and I'll just... <laughs> Paul. <laughs> yes, thank you, Beth. The one word that we have looked at for the last two days is Paul. So we're actually moving on to the third word. In first in in Colossians one, does anybody know what the third word is? Paul and that's it. Yep. Thank you, Susanna and Brenda. 
Uh, what is the third word in Colossians 1? One. Yep, you all are you're like, she's making us get our Bibles out early in the morning. I know. It's good for you. All right. And it gives me, a, oh, Apollos. Yep, it's a or <laughs> maybe I do need my glasses on. This is so bad. Apostle. Paul, an apostle. Uh, does anyone know what apostle means? Oh, this is a great opportunity for me to have a little sip of coffee. Does anybody know what apostle means? You type it in. I'll drink the coffee and enjoy. Mm-hmm. And I'll keep my eyes out for any other kinds of birds. What? Is an apostle that's the question that is the question I gotta practice my bird sounds what is an apostle what is an apostle mm -hmm. yep <laughs> good morning Ray question of the day so far we've answered the first one we've been talking about Paul and the third question was what is or the second question was what was the third word of first Corinthians 1 which was apostle so the question is what is an apostle a student of the Lord it's a great idea any other thoughts what is an apostle yes what is an apostle do, 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 do. I'll give you another minute. Well, a minute seems like a really long time, doesn't it? A few more seconds. What is an apostle? I love the way you guys are thinking, though, right? I can just see you, like, thinking through your minds. Like, what is an apostle? Because you hear about it all the time, right? Uh, sent off. Thank you, Mina. An apostle is a sent one, a church planter. Um, and um, I'll said like a student of the Lord. So they are uh, chief disciple of Jesus Christ. So there's two, two ways of interpreting apostle. One is the apostle, the, the office of apostleship, which is one of the disciples of the Lord, um, one of the 12 or Paul, right? So uh, those are uh, the office of apostleship. All right. You can only be one of the 12 or Paul. Or there's the gifting of apostleship. Okay, because I just want you to get this. Okay, two understandings. One is the office of, of apostles, one of the 12 disciples, or Paul, because it says Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Um, or the gifting of apostle, which means to be sent off to preach, right? To tell people, to start something new. Um, so that their giftings are to go off and start something new, uh, plant a church or plant a new work um, for the purpose of furthering the kingdom of Jesus, right? To build up, make more disciples. So um, that is what an apostle is. And, and so that's what Paul was. Paul was an apostle of Jesus Christ. And I'm just going to, we're going to talk a little bit about Jesus a little bit further if we can. If we get to Colossians 1.15, we're going to talk a little bit more about Jesus. But just, uh, uh, Jesus means, was sent to save people from their sins. That's what Jesus means. Jesus uh, saves people, right, from their sins. Saves people from their sins. That's what Jesus means. Uh, Christ is the anointed one, the set apart one, um, the Messiah, uh, the deliverer. So Paul Right? We know who Paul was. We talked about his story. We talked about uh, his willingness to, to change his name in order to, to give, to uh, preach to the Gentiles. And so now an apostle, well, what was he doing for the Messiah, the sent one, right? The one who came to deliver, the one who came to save people from their sins, right? Jesus. So he was an apostle, Paul, which we've talked about, was an apostle, a sent one, someone to go and and. Uh, preach the gospel to start something new of Jesus Christ, the one who came to save us from our sins, to deliver us. Okay, so now that we know who Paul was and what he did, that's what I want to hang on to a little bit for this morning, that idea of apostle. 
because we can often put people up on pedestals because of the title that they wear. And we can think, oh, well, I'm not a preacher. I'm not an apostle. I'm not a, a teacher. I'm not a whatever, right? We, we look in... Um, we can look at all those, you know, wonderful giftings, right? We think, oh, if I could only preach like that, or if I can only teach like that, then that would be great. And, and actually, that's what I want to talk about this morning. So if you have your paper Bibles, uh, if you want to turn to uh, 1 Corinthians 12, it says this. Now, about spiritual gifts. So not only did Paul have the office of apostleship, he also had the giftings of an apostle, right? He, he could preach and teach and uh, start something new, right? So he had the giftings of it. So about spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I don't want you to be ignorant. Um, you know that when you were pagan, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I tell you that no one who is speaking of the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit, okay? So Paul's saying, I don't want you to be ignorant about this. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. That means like you might, there might be 17 people that have the gift of apostleship or the gift of teaching or the gift of hospitality, but where they actually work that out is completely different. Some people might start do something at work. Some people might do something, um, in, in a church building center, or they might start a new ministry. But those, those giftings, where they're working them out, the type of service it is, could be completely different. Some people might have the gift of teaching, but not do well with children. But they might be really great with people who don't know Jesus, right? You see how important that is to know? Very important. It also goes on to say that uh, different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works in all of them. So that means we're, we're given different portions of the Holy Spirit or the, the Holy Spirit works out in that a little bit differently. So some people are able to preach and thousands come to know Jesus. And some people are able to share. They have the gift of evangelism and they're able to share with someone on the street and they come to know the, know the Lord, right? Same gift, Different, different services, right? Different, different influence. Same gift. That's really important. But the thing that is really, really important is that it goes on to say, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To each one. Each one. Each one. Each one. So it's like the, the Holy Spirit is given to you for the common good. For the common good. The Holy Spirit is given to each one for the common good. Each one. So that that doesn't that means and Paul would be the first one like to say, like, yes, these are my giftings, but I am the same as anyone else, right? He kept saying, to, you know, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. It's not about um, you know, waving our gifts. And saying, yeah, look at me. But it's also not like, well, I'm not really all that great. That's not true. It says, for the common good. For the common good. If you want to flip over to Romans 12, um, it says it says this. All right. <clears throat> Verse 3. Here we go. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in according with the measure of faith the God has given to you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we who are many form one body and each member belongs to the others. We have different gifts according to the grace God gives us if a man's gift is prophesying let him prophesy in proportion to his faith if it is serving let him serve it if it's teaching let him teach if it is encouraging let him encourage if it is contributing to the needs of others let him give generously if it is leadership let him govern diligently if it is showing mercy let him do it cheerfully right so we're just with whatever gift that God has given we're just supposed to use it 
We're just supposed to use it and let the Spirit deal with the outcome. I want to flip, flip over to Ephesians 4. I know your fingers, you're like, I'm not going to have to work out my fingers today. They're already worked out. Um, all right. So where it says, you know what? <laughs> I'm like, Ephesians 4. Um, do, 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 do. Okay. So it says, uh, 11. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of God. I get excited about that because it tells me that I need you. I need you in order to become the to experience the fullest measure of what God has for me, I need you. I need you to work out your gift. I need you to give generously. I need you to encourage greatly. I need you to teach boldly. I need you to share unswervingly. Isn't that a great word? Like, I need you to do that. And your kids need you to do that. And your friends need you to do that. The body of, of believers need, need you. We need you if you have ever thought I'm not needed or my gift isn't that great that's a lie from the pit of hell and that's the enemy trying to take you out to say you are insignificant and I just read that the word of God says that he has a calling on your life he has a calling on your life no matter what gift it is whether it's hospitality whether it's generosity whether it's leadership or teaching, God has gifted you with a, a portion of his power and grace in order to walk that out, to bring other people into the fullness of maturity in him so they can experience the greatness of God's power in their life. We need you. We need you. And so even though uh, in Colossians we read Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, we could very easily read, you know, Sam, an encourager of Jesus Christ. Right? We could read uh, Diane, a servant of Christ Jesus, by the will of God. We could read, you know, anyone's name, Sarah, an administrator of Christ Jesus. Right? Brenda, a writer of Christ Jesus, right? We put our name in there and the gift that God has given us. And we read of Christ Jesus by the will of God. Because I want you to understand that you have purpose. That God has called you to do great things. And who is Jesus, Christ Jesus? The Messiah, the deliverer, the chosen one to deliver people from their sins so they can experience the fullness of God. And he has called you, chosen you gifted you to do amazing and awesome things so if you're believing right now that God has has forgotten you or given up from you given up on you that's a lie that is a lie that is a lie so we're gonna pray right now I did bring a tissue so Lord God we just come before you right now and we ask Lord God that we would walk in the fullness of this text this morning Paul was an apostle of Christ Jesus but Lord some of us are givers of Christ Jesus. Some of us are offer hospitality in the name of, of Christ Jesus. Some of us are teachers in the name of Christ Jesus. Some of us are builders. Some of us are planters. Some of us, Lord, extend love and compassion in the name of Christ Jesus. And so, Lord, would you help us to walk out that calling today and your and the power and grace and faith that you have given to us and for those of us that are struggling lord would you help us to hold on to this truth that we with our story with our background are called by the one who came to save us from our sins the one who came to deliver us by the will of god you wanted to do that and so father when the enemy is trying to steal, kill, and destroy this from us today, we rebuke the enemy in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, break the power of those words. Would you do that? Would you pull us out from underneath that crap that we've been listening to? And would you put this verse in our head? And would you fill in the blanks for us? Would you fill in the blanks for us? And then would you give us the courage to walk it out? And we ask this in your name. Amen. All right, my dear friends.
that's it. That's all. Make sure you get outside. <laughs> like and share. And remember, you you are gifted by God to do something amazing to encourage and build up other people in their faith so that they can experience the fullness of what God has for them. All right, my dear friends, that's it. That's all. Like and share. Bye.